Hey YouTube, we're back with the ASH26 here, part three of the LED install. So far we've just got this tail, tail light fixture going, which is right here. It's uglier than I want it to be, but it's, I hope it's gonna work really good. It's always harder to do these things than you think it's going to be. So, I got the leads for the pair of LEDs here. And now I need to terminate these into the Emacs servo leads. Ideally, I would have just tons and tons of extra up here to work with. And if I recall, I have enough, but I wouldn't describe it as tons and tons, so I'm not going to tug on this until I run into a problem, like disconnecting it. That would not be very fun. But we don't have an overly huge amount of wire to work with, and so for that reason I'm going to be quite careful to not shorten these any more than necessary. Okay. We need to put our resistors in series with the negative side. So that's going to be our next thing is we're going to get the soldering iron fired back up. We've already got those soldered together from part two I believe. So that'll be probably our next step to get that in there. Now we have choices on this. We need to go into the the brown wire with this and then the red wire with this so we have to separate them this is a scary part for me because we have an otherwise working plane and we're going to deteriorate the strength of our wiring we're going to degrade it not necessarily make it worse I guess, but there's a good possibility that that will happen. And I'm sorry that this tail is kind of blocking the light. I've been thinking of different things I could do to help with that, but I haven't really come up with a good one. So I'm just using this knife to get between to get between those two leads. Okay, so I'm in there now. So I'm just wiggling in a vain attempt to not damage either of the wires. And just to only separate them. Now if you were using a Futaba color code you'd have white, red, and black. This happens to be Emacs. So we're dealing with yellow, orange, or excuse me, yellow, red, and brown. Okay, so now that those are separated, Let's get our flashlight so we can further inspect and make sure we haven't damaged anything. We got lucky there. Didn't have any damage there. So it was nice. Doesn't always work out that way. So now we need to grab a flat bladed screwdriver here. We'll come in between these two wires just to separate them apart from one another. Now ideally, we're not even gonna cut this wire. We're just simply gonna separate a very small portion of the shielding and then we're gonna put our resistor into that. But after thinking about how tight this is, 
I think I'm just going to do the obvious easy way, which is to go ahead and strip this wire back a little bit at a reasonable point where I can still work with it. I'm just going to do this to make my life easier. I'm going to take out approximately the length of these two resistors worth of wire so that the white and black end up being close to the same length. And then I can take this back over to the bench to solder. So we'll just get our little hook there. So you guys are going to be potentially watching this on New Year's Eve. If you are, Happy New Year's. If you're watching it some other time, never mind. Most of my traffic on these mod videos are coming from my regulars, so if you're one of my regulars, thanks for being part of this. These mod videos are the hardest to film and the least rewarding. But if you guys really like them, then I'll keep doing them. Okay, little heat shrink down nicely, and then on the other end we'll just kind of do the same thing. In preparation for doing that over at the plane. And because this hasn't yet been attached, we don't have to worry about the heat shrink just quite yet. I do have kind of a nasty bump there, so I'm going to try to flatten that a little bit. And there you have it guys. So now we'll carry this over and reattach the oh, that wire. I want to keep this chunk. These little chunks are the ones that are handy for when you're doing lighting projects like this. Okay, so now we can go ahead and double this back on itself. And then squish this down. Simple, simple and easy. Now, of course, that's going to get tucked down. It's going to get tucked down in the wing. And uh, at this point, I need the soldering iron over here. So one trick I've done in the past, I'm sure you guys have seen it, if you've seen any of my mod videos, is I just unplug it and just walk over to my work, leaving it unplugged.
should be plenty of heat to get that. Just come back, get that plug back in fairly quick. Keep it hot. Okay, so now the next step is going to be to uh, probably cover that with some, some heat shrink of some sort. So I suppose I probably should have grabbed some before I did that, but it's not the end of the world. I've made stupid decisions like that before. I'm sure to do it again. That's all we're going to do. Just heat shrink that down right there. Not 100% sure this is going to end up being a great size. It might be just a touch too big. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel where the resistors are to make sure that they're somewhat centered. Okay, so it's going to go just a touch more. Now I also want to be careful about where I heat so I don't damage my finish on this plane. So I might actually pull it out by the front of the plane. Now you'll notice it's not shrunk down super tight on the wire. That's okay. Just take and pinch while it's still hot. Sometimes you'll get lucky and it'll just kind of cling to itself. So you'll get some of that mechanical strength that you were hoping for. Because it'll actually kind of hang on to the wire then. Cool. Okay, so we got that done. So now our next stop is to penetrate that wire. And this is a little bit tricky. Um, because we don't probably have enough room to get our stripper head through there. See, we've got to be able to get half of this through to make the cut. We're going to try, and we're probably going to fail miserably. I'm pretty much planning on it. Oh, look at that. We're lucky enough to get through. Okay, so then we're just going to cut and then pull gently away from the servo. If we're going to damage something. I'd rather damage the wire. We can always fix the wire, worst case scenario. Now, you guys might remember that I don't actually have a connector here. I believe I cut that end off and then soldered it straight to the wire. And I had forgotten about that until just now. So I'm glad I didn't go in there looking for an extension cord to plug into and just Y off of it. I typically don't do that anyway. Just never really seems to be quite as easy as I figure and then you got a bunch of connectors and weird adapters all over the place. Okay, so now just to avoid having pressure on our pull pull system, I'm just going to make sure we don't have any anything bound up here. Okay. So now that we've kind of ensured that, I'm going to go ahead and get this wire up in here. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this real great. Just an awkward moment. I need to get something sharp, like a knife, and I need to go into this wire, not to cut the wire, all I'm trying to do is just make a pass through, okay? So you see how the blade is through, but it hasn't cut the wire. I've just made a channel, now I'm just turning the knife blade to open it up. Now I can take that black wire again, and attempt See? Now those things are together. Gah. I'm going to try to hook this wire first. I think it might be easier to have the hook in it and then slip it in. So just grab that. Just give it a fold. Just like that. Um, I 
Not 100% sure. Okay, I see what's happened. I just have to make my little opening again. Okay, so just like this, I'll just twist it a little bit and open up a little place to receive that hook that I've just made. Okay, so I'm hooked in now. Now I just squished it with my thumbnail. And then I just want to kind of point the wire back a little bit. Nothing too fancy there. Just kind of dropping it back into that cavity. Okay, so now we can take our soldering iron. We'll do the same thing we did just a minute ago. We'll just unplug it from the wall. Walk over with some fresh solder. Very simple. It'd be a lot simpler if you didn't have a camera hanging out of your face. That's why I run into things with the camera, because it's it's probably this out that far from my face. So it's just you always have to kind of keep your brain wrapped around this strange proximity of the camera from where you're standing. So we're going to take some black electrical tape and we're going to just wrap this around where we expose that conductor. Now we never actually cut, we never actually cut this. I wish I could get a better view for you guys at home. Okay, so I'm going to try this trick, trick of the day. I'm just going to feed this through like that. Okay. My cut is too wide. Make that a little bit smaller. Should make it quite quite a bit easier to get that fed through. Okay, so right through like that. And then just wrap it onto itself. You don't even really need to go around in a circle on this, but it probably would be worth the extra effort if I could get it to go. Just very challenging, tight spot. Okay, now I'm just going to feed this resistor bank down, just into the wing, wherever, wherever it fits. You can't see, so it's not going to do any good for you guys to see this, but... You just have to make sure it's out of the way of where the servo is going to go in, of course. So you have plenty of room in there. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that exactly how it is. Um, if we have to get back in and add something later, then we can just peel that tape off. But it shouldn't come off under its own normal wear and tear of running. Okay, so now I want to just take this knife so I can separate back these two wires again. They're already separated. Just not pulled apart quite as far as I'd like them to be. Okay, so now that that red wire is, ex well not exposed, but separated, I can take and grab that with my pliers so I don't cut it with a knife. And then I want to take and strip back just a little bit of this wire. So I'm just holding it, pulling the wire away so it's toward the servo. Okay, and you see we've exposed that copper. Now we'll take the knife again We'll come in here, and then we'll just press the knife sideways against that. 
rolling it to make an opening. And that opening is going to give us a spot to stick the wire that we need to make contact with, which is right here. So we're going to do our quick hook with this. Ouch. Okay, so we'll just hook it back like that. And we'll just come in here to the red wire and hook it. Now we want that wire to be loop back the other way probably. So we'll just keep a little bit of pressure on it. We'll grab that little hook we made. And we'll squish it down square at our first opportunity. Then the soldering iron will come over and follow up and finish the job. But right now I'm just kind of having trouble getting everything to stay situated. Okay, now that we're situated there, grab the soldering iron. Need to clean the tip mechanically a little bit. Get a little fresh tip conditioner. Okay, got it soldered. So now, keeping in mind guys, we never actually broke contact on the red or the brown wire. So we should be totally fine on those things. In fact, we won't need this for a little bit, so we'll leave that unplugged. So now, we could do that with a different color, but I, I really don't care what color it is as long as it gets the job done. In this case, we're going to go for black because that's what we had sitting there. And remember, all we're doing here is just trying to cover up the contact area, the electrical um, place where we'd have a, a dead short potentially. We're going to have those two electrical take tape um, pieces. And we got these two red wire, or excuse me, they're white and black wires. So now we need to just kind of figure out a way to tuck those down in there so that they get in and out of the way from the servo. So we'll just tuck that down just kind of with our fingertip. Now these. To avoid further wear and tear and mitigate any remaining risk of short, we're going to just take a small piece of tape, and I mean just like a half an inch chunk, and that's just going to go around it to just kind of give me a little bit of peace of mind that things aren't going to be flopping around in weird ways. You remember, most of this stuff is, I mean, I wouldn't want to have to take it off, but it would be relatively easy to take this this tape off if we needed to. Okay, Relatively easy meaning still going to be a huge pain in the butt. Okay so now as I get ready to tuck this all back down in there I need to be mindful that I got to get back onto my linkage which is right there. I'm just going to get that twisted and then blammo whammo. So we should be ready to mount that back on there but we need to wisely test that the LEDs are going to work. Uh, we have a 3S pack here. Now we don't need to go through the full trouble of hooking everything up. We just need the BEC to work. Yep. There you go. There's your LEDs, guys. On the tail. It's going to be visible from a little bit. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Very happy. Okay, cool. So we'll go ahead and put our 3S pack back. And just for you, everybody's understanding, especially when you have a plane that could be running 3S or 4S, um, you definitely don't want to design your lighting circuit around using a 3S pack directly hooked up to these things because you will burn them out if you go up to 4S. I mean, it takes a little bit of time, but you'll burn them out if you go straight off the strips, you know? So I was just going to let you know that because I've run into that before. 
on my Delta Ray, if I remember right. Oh no, actually those were those were different anyway. But my friend has done it, so. So I'm just gonna get this cover put back on. Boy, I tell you what, when you're doing these LED projects, it is like demoralizing sometimes when you're working with those little dinky turds and you have a problem. It's, you just have to be persistent or you're never going to get a project like this done. And I mean, it doesn't look perfect, but it looks pretty decent. From a distance, you certainly won't have any issue with it because you're not going to know it's there. Um, and by the way, it's so bright that it's... Essentially, it's blinding to the extent that you would be able to visually closely inspect, you know, like the light housing, which is really the ugly part here. And let's be honest, it's not that bad. It's better than having a hole or a few extra holes in the carbon fiber, or not the carbon fiber, in the fiberglass. This isn't carbon fiber, guys. I. I was just totally misspeak. This is a composite fiberglass plane. And I really, really like it. It's got to be one of my best planes. And I've got a lot of planes, guys. Some of them are pretty, pretty decent planes, too. Helped my grandpa with a project this weekend. That was pretty fun. He has a new trainer that he's supposedly going to fly. And I will not be holding my breath on that, but still. I kind of wish he would, but... You can definitely teach an old dog new tricks, but some old dogs don't want to learn new tricks, you know what I mean? But it's cool that we get to share that experience and... I just had another grandpa pass away here a few weeks ago and didn't really ever share anything quite like that with him, but uh, it's the reminder that they aren't around forever. You need to take the time to enjoy their company and I'm sure they want the same from, from you. So anyway, just uh, that was kind of a neat thing. we got the electronics put into his plane and he's going to get the covering on it because that's something I'm not good at. He doesn't know the electronics at all and got the ESC and the he had the motor mounted. Got that ready to go so that'll be happening. You guys will see a maiden on it. It's not probably going to be a anything too terribly fantastic in terms of the flight performance should be quite powerful compared to the brushed motor in mechanical switch <laughs> that we were supposed to use with it okay so we're just going to tighten this screw here boy it's really going in tight it makes me nervous like I've somehow missed a screw or something weird like that. I'm gonna pause and get that worked out. Goodness gracious, that was a pain. But I got them all in there. I don't understand why this one was so so stiff, but it's in there. So now, the last step before we call it quits on this video. Alright guys, so the last step before we call it quits. Ooh, that's not good. Did you guys see that? That's not good. See how one of them is turning on and off with pressure. That's not good at all. Okay, so we'll fix that here. Okay, so this is interesting because it's almost like in sequence. And it's funny because I plugged in a 2S pack. But, uh, I'm not sure what to what to think of that. I'm assuming we're making a breaking contact in there. 
So it's always a good idea to get that worked out before you continue. But guys, for now, thanks for watching. Come back for more. This is part three of the LED nav light mod on the Ash 26. Come back for more. Don't forget to like and subscribe.